Hi, people! Recently, a swarm of bees has flown out of our transparent hive. Having inspected, I did not find any queen bee or queen bee cell in the family, so it was decided to add a new queen to the bees. However, they did not accept it and threw it out of the hive. We did not take any further action. We hadn't been even looking at the bees for almost three weeks. Let them take care of it. And you guys, if you want to know more about bees, don't forget to subscribe to Olive today. Three weeks later, we go back to the bees to film their nightlife. Surprisingly, there is a queen in this family as it's turned out. You can see it from the honeycomb with sealed brood. In such cases, beekeepers say that the female bee is good. The denser the brood, the healthier the family. It is not clear why it was not found last time. Most likely it is a young queen, and last time it was at the flight. Or we weren't very attentive. So the family is all right. The only drawback is that the brood is concentrated exclusively at the top, and all the frames below are filled with honey. Consequently, there is no free honeycomb left for the queen to lay eggs, except for a small island among the honey. Besides, there are some honeycombs in the hive, which the bees have not built yet. Probably, there are not enough builders. Now we'll take off the glass and do a little upgrade. And here is the female bee how it could have not been noticed during the previous inspection. It is walking around the honeycomb looking for a place to lay eggs because bees have taken almost all of them with honey. Some of them they have even sealed up, but not only the honeycomb. They've sealed their hive with propolis. Propolis is also known as bee glue. It is used by bees to seal gaps in the hive to prevent drafts and keep the bee house at a stable temperature. Speaking about the temperature, today we're going to install a sensor inside and see what the temperature regime is inside the hive at night, during the day, and in general during the 24 hours. So, let's start disassembling and taking out the frames. And here is propolis, it is a useful bee product, which is used in medicine as an antibiotic. 25 grams of this substance costs about $1. By the way, guys, do you remember our experiment which milk will sour last? At that time, we put a silver coin, a frog, an antibiotic tablet, and much more into the milk. Propolis was one of the winners then. While removing one of the frames, we broke in a honeycomb with honey that the bees have stuck to the glass. There is so much honey inside that it immediately starts dripping. No big deal. The bees will clean it all up very quickly and spread it all over the honeycomb. I've rearranged the frames, put the glass back in place, and begin to examine whether everything is in order after assembly. And at this point, I managed to get to the festival performed by a bee. It happens not often when you are able to see a bee dance. And here I've even managed to film it. It's hard to call the actions performed a dance. The bee with its movements tells the sisters where and in what direction it has found the honeybee flowers. The circular movements show that the source for honey harvest is not further than 100 meters from the hive, and the degree of dance vigor tells how rich the place is. The waggle figure eight dance is intended for farther distances. Being between the two loops of the eight, the bee rapidly moves its abdomen, the direction in which it is heading towards the food source relative to the sun. And the frequency and speed indicates the distance to it. The bee signals its conspecifics about the flower type by the smell. But the most interesting thing is that bees in space are orientated by the sun, which is constantly in motion. To decode the dance signals, bees must know where the sun is, have a sense of time, determine wind speed, and have organs that sense the magnetic field of the Earth. By the way, if someone wonders how bees have learned to orientate themselves by the sun and the electromagnetic field of the Earth, here are a few figures that will clarify things. Bees have been living on Earth for 30 million years, while humans have only lived for 2 million. 
and a man or homo sapiens has been alive for a measly 40,000 years. If we convert these figures into more tangible ones, then imagine that bees have been living on the planet for a whole year, humans only 24 days, and homo sapiens a measly 12 hours. And a beekeeping started two and a half hours ago. When mankind lives for 30 million years, perhaps it will learn to orientate itself according to the Earth's magnetic field. Earlier, I told you that I had placed a temperature sensor in the hive. For the accuracy of readings, it was placed exactly in the middle, two frames at the bottom and two at the top. The hive thermometer showed almost 29 degrees Celsius immediately after assembling. But when it got dark outside, the temperature rose and became a little above 33 degrees Celsius. Thermorgulation is at a very high level. Let's see what the bees do at night. Okay, people, it's now 2.27 a.m. It's a cool night and it's only 17 degrees. It's a little cloudy. The temperature sensing device is showing almost 34 degrees Celsius. If you put your ear to it, it's silent. Have all the bees gone to sleep? But no, the work is going on full swing. It's clearly not a late night snack. Everyone's at work here. Some are cleaning honeycombs. A separate crew is building new ones. Where I've broken one is being restored. There's a guard at the entrance to the hive. Bees don't care if it's day or night. There's always plenty to do. There is an opinion that bees never sleep. And from the very birth, they only do that work, work and work. So they work flat out until they die. That is called from overworking. This is partly true. But still, when bees are completely tired, they allow themselves a five-minute rest. For example, this immobile bee is nothing but sleeping. For example, it's better to rest for the flying bee at night, whose task is to collect nectar. And what about the drones? They are just drones. I've been expecting to see everything, but the fact that they sleep at night and in colonies, it's become a surprise to me. Even bees stomp on them, but they don't care. They're having their sleepy hour. What about the queen bee? It doesn't go along without rest either. I have observed this picture in the daytime by myself, and not just observed, even filmed it for you on video. Here it's frozen in one place and isn't moving. It is a microsleep, and it takes only about 30 seconds. It wakes up, washes its face, and goes back to work, looking for empty honeycombs. I wonder how it's going at night in other, standard hives. Here life is much more active, the family is more powerful. The bees are ventilating, evaporating excess moisture from the honey. In addition, slugs become active at night and the bees have to defend their home from uninvited guests. One bee even blows off and releases its stinger into someone and now it's lying there dying. Hopefully the kamikaze bee hasn't died in vain and the enemy is defeated. We also have a little test for the bees. We put a container filled with honey on the beehive entrance and wait for someone to fall into the trap. The three bees quickly find the honey and start collecting it. While they're eating, I'm moving them two meters away. Do you think they'll be able to navigate at night and find their way back? They have collected honey, but they don't know where to fly. They are fussing, but they can't find their way back. I have been watching these chaotic movements for about 20 minutes and move the stump back to the house. When we do the same experiment in the daytime, the bees have no problems with the return. Do you remember about the temperature sensing device? Throughout the day, it has stayed consistently between 33 and 35 degrees. Although the temperature outside is only 14 degrees in the morning, now it's an evening and the thermometer shows 23. Now you know what a cool thermorgulation the bees have and why they deserve a light. That's all for now. Bye-bye.